Hey everyone, www.qtptutorial.net here. Thank you all for joining me here today for another tutorial on Quick Test Professional and learning it from A to Z. This is part two of our API testing tutorial with UFT 11.5. If you missed the last session, go ahead and check it out. We discussed all of this stuff and did a little bit of interacting with UFT 11.5 and its API testing GUI. Today, I wanted to continue amongst this topic and discuss a few more things with you before actually getting into the web services testing. I'm just spending taking a little bit of time to get you guys familiar with everything so that it makes your learning curve much smaller and makes your life much easier because that's what we do. So today I'm going to try to cover how to interact with UFT API and I'm going to show you guys how to link steps together to create a flow. So let's open up UFT. It's already open from last session. And if you guys can remember, I started this API tutorial test here where I multiply two numbers. So first thing you guys should notice is how this has this, you may call it an action. It has a name and it's called multiply four. This was just a generic name that QTP decided to assign it at the time. You can change this property. If you look over here on the right side, there's what's called the properties pane. And in this properties pane, you may notice it has three tabs. It has a general tab. And here you guys can see it has some properties. And if I want it, I can go over here and change the step name. And what should I name the step? Well, logically, I want to name it to what we're testing, right? Multiply five times four. So how about I change it to that? Just a logical name for our purposes. Okay, and then it just has a step ID. There's another pane here called input checkpoints. You guys may see that little tooltip that shows up. In here, obviously we can put in inputs and checkpoints. So check it out. We interacted with this in our multiplication step. We put in two properties, A and B. These were the two numbers that were multiplied. And down here in the checkpoint section, we put in the expected value and we made sure that it was validated. Finally, there's the events pane. And here you can come in, perform some handlers. We'll get to that stuff in the future. Just wanted to make you guys aware of what is here. Now, the other very important part of interacting with API is this toolbox over here on the left pane. If I click on this tab, I will get all of these actions here. Check it out. I can drag stuff from here into the flow. As you guys saw, we did the multiplication. If I want to do another math test, we can do a addition, for example. We can drag it here. Okay. And if I want to add another miscellaneous step, I can do things like custom code, but I want to do a report message action and I will drag it here. Okay. We'll interact with those in a little bit. So here you just pick your random activities, whether you want string manipulations, system stuff. It's pretty easy. I've noticed that UFT has made it very user friendly so that you don't need too much technical knowledge to be able to operate this. It's kind of just very intuitive and you just interact with the GUI and do what you need. Okay, so that's those. Also, I want to point you to the start and the end bubbles. If you guys notice this, this is the entire flow of our API scenario and it starts here and it goes through everything and it ends here. And at the start, you can see over here in the property section, we also have some tabs. So we have the test settings tab. Remember before, maybe we would have had to go into here and modify some stuff. Now you can just do it here by just, you know, changing anything you want. User defined timeout and so on and so forth. You can automatically generate selectors. 
stop test on failure. Then we have test input and output properties. Here you can add, if you want, some outputs and some input parameters, just like we used to do in the old versions. We got the test variables. So here you guys can check out all the test variables. So these variables show things like, you know, the test directory, test name, local host name, so on. Then we have dependencies. So here may just be a list of some resources and so on, whatever is relevant to the test. And then just like all others, we have the events tab. Same thing, you can add stuff before the execution and after the execution of this step. And same thing goes for the end scenario. It's got some properties some steps, some variables, and some events. Okay, so this is kind of the general overview of what's going on here and how you guys are going to interact with the API. The rest should be kind of self-explanatory as we go through it. Hopefully it all makes sense. So now let's get into this scenario where we did a multiplication of five times four. You can see the input parameters here. So after we did the multiplication, now I want to do an addition, but I want to use the result of this for this step, right? So how do we do that? Well, we're going to click on this addition step and we got the same thing, right? So our first value, we will create a link to the result. And I clicked over here on this chain looking thing. I'm going to come to available steps. You guys see I have a step called multiply five times four, and I'm going to grab its result. Click OK. You can also do custom expressions if you want. And boom, there it is. You guys check it out, how it looks. So now this took the result. And also notice what happened. This arrow was created that the result from this is going to the A parameter of this. How cool is that, huh? And then this is kind of like the output result. Check it out. Result gets stored into A and B. Okay. And then B, what, what will B be? I don't know. Let's say 10. So let's go to the properties and change the name. Add result of multiplication with 10. Okay. So check it out. Our step is renamed so that we know what's going on. And now we just need a verification, right? So this is 20 and here we're going to add 10 to 20. So we need a checkpoint and 10 plus 20 is equal to 30. And we're going to validate. Yes. Okay. So now this is going to produce a checkpoint as well. Whether this step worked correctly, whether this method worked correctly. Finally, just for the heck of it, to use a different method, I wanted to show you guys a report message okay and this we can do many things this is like the reported dot report event we can report done pass or fail i'm going to do done and message you can either you know type in your own okay and then where is this going to show run results and output window okay and if you want we can rename it do you guys see it's kind of very now useful and intuitive in that almost all of these guys have similar tabs. So all the options in each tab may change, but otherwise it's pretty easy to navigate. You know, if you want to change some properties, you know, you come over here and just modify them. So I'm just going to call this report message like that and remove the six because remember that QTP just assigns these names. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and run it and see what happens. F5 to run. Check out this output all the way down there. You can see it here. And let's look at our results. It failed. Okay. So let's see why. So the report message, just like a reporter. Oops, and I apologize, guys. I just realized that I ran a different test. You guys see that? API test 2. I ran the wrong test for you. Let's go over here to the Solution Explorer. We want to run this guy. API Tutorial.
Okay, check out the results. Now it passed, that makes sense. I was wondering why did it fail. We can expand everything, write our multiplication with our checkpoint and our addition. You can check it out, 20 plus 10, 30. And our checkpoint was expected value is 30, actual value is 30, it passed. And then we get a report message that QTPTutorial.net rocks. You guys get that just like a report event. But also, what you can do is do other things, such as you can link to whatever you want. You want to link to a step, you can. You want to link to test variables, like, I don't know, like localhost name, you can. And now, it links to localhost name. And then when it runs, you know, it can show you this at the end. If you want to, you know, show it somewhere in the beginning of the run, who's running the test, you can or whatever you want. You guys can put any values that you desire in there. Cool. So let's open this back up. All right, guys. So I showed you everything here in part two. It was just a quick general overview. You guys got to know how APIs work, how to interact with UFT API and the new GUI interface that it has. And next step is to actually start doing some web services testing. So I hope you guys are excited for that. I can't wait to show you what UFT can do with its all new features. It's very exciting. And if you guys like what you see, I highly recommend not only our channel, but to our email list. Signing up for our channel is wonderful. It's great because you'll get all our videos. But the problem is... At some point in the future, let's assume YouTube goes down or YouTube kicks us off for some reason, we'll lose all you guys and you guys will lose all of us and you will not be able to communicate with us and you will not be able to know where we went. But if you sign up for our email list, you guys will always be able to keep track of us because we'll be able to communicate with you, let you know any news. Plus, you receive all these bonus gifts like the top five tools that we use to enhance our automation careers. You'll receive Function Friday's code to your inboxes, upcoming webinars, and VIP access to some information that will never be found on the web. And we promise that we never spam, guys. It's just a great way for all of us to stay in touch and for everybody to support each other. So I highly recommend that you go to qtptutorial.net Sign up for our email list, and you can continue to stay on top of everything that's going on with us. So anyways, I'll see you guys in session number three. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.